Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 5th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Really interesting phishing site that uh, Yi Jing uh, came across and uh, well, he actually managed to find this phishing site while investigating an online banking phishing site that uh, hit a bank uh, in Singapore. But well, that phishing site was done instead after uh, pivoting through some of the IP addresses, Yi Jing uh, did uh, find a phishing site impersonating the UN uh, peace Corp uh, website. This uh, phishing website apparently was collecting uh, data about uh, UN peacekeeping personnel. The reason that uh, Yijing thinks that it is a phishing site is that it is very close to the official uh, fish, uh, UN peacekeeping site, but it has the additional feature to allow users to search by uh, tracking IDs, essentially personnel IDs that are apparently uh, being collected here. Now, we don't know the phishing email, what that looked like. And of course, there's still a small chance that uh, this is some kind of development site or so that just happened to use uh, that particular uh, host and that IP address and uh, was left open uh, to the public. And then we have yet more vulnerability in OT, meaning operation technology centric TCP IP stack. The a team from Richard from JFrog and Forescout, that's the same team that looked at similar stacks and found vulnerabilities in the past, now looked at niche stack. Niche stack is, well, not necessarily just used for niche devices, it's used by 200 different device vendors that basically use this TCP IP stack preferably for these operational technology devices that you find on factory floors in power plants and the like. And they found 14 different vulnerabilities. One of them they rated with a CVSS score of 9.8 because it does likely allow remote code execution. Also a second one that's also a buffer overflow in HTTP POST uh, requests that they rated with a CVSS score of 9.1. Other than that, lots of sort of basic TCP IP issues like predictable sequence numbers and the like. So very similar vulnerabilities, of course, as they found in some of the other stacks they looked at. Patching, of course, will heavily rely on vendors actually releasing patches for individual devices. As an end user, there may not be much that you can do about it other than sort of you know, follow the usual best practice and not expose those devices uh, to the internet. Forescout also released a script that should allow you to identify devices that run this particular TCP IP stack based on simple TCP IP fingerprinting. And then we got a new Ouch newsletter from SANS's uh, Security Awareness uh, Program. The Ouch newsletter, again, is focusing on end users, so not uh, IT professionals or security professionals. This edition does focus on security using the cloud. I always recommend uh, share it with a family and the like. That's really sort of who it's uh, written for, an end user who is using various cloud services what to watch out for in order uh, to use these services uh, securely. And the Lockbit ransomware, according to Bleeping Computer, is now advertising, looking for the help of insiders at companies to deploy the ransomware. This is, of course, a very uh, insidious uh, and ingenious also way uh, to deploy ransomware. You're not relying on the external vulnerabilities. And often, of course, insiders do have right access to a lot of critical files. Encrypting those files may cause substantial damage in order to trigger a ransom payment. In order uh, to entice users for their services, they offer essentially a cut off the ransom payment, promising millions of dollars if you are willing to deploy this ransomware in your company. Before you jump on the bandwagon, remember that this is not really a new trick. Earlier this year, a former Tesla employee, I believe, was uh, arrested for a attempting to do exactly that, deploying ransomware inside their company. 
And finally, just a quick note that uh, Microsoft is warning of a newer Office 365 phishing campaign. Phishing for Office 365 credentials, of course, is still big business, often then abused for business email uh, compromise. In this particular case, the attacker is a little bit more crafty in how they create their phishing emails. They use a com.com domain in order to make the email look more plausible. Also, they're heavily relying on uh, cloud stored uh, documents for their phishing campaign. So uh, usual uh, resources that are not as easily blocked with a simple uh, block lists. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.